good morning guys and gals so this is my last day here in Carabelle it's absolutely gorgeous it's like oh man 70 70 is my guess no wind they say a storm's coming in tonight but I sure can't see it unless it comes in quick we are going to take the nomad which is already in the river parked right around the corner there and we're gonna go up the river and just do a little exploring today kind of getting some back channels and just try it out to see how well it does um, I think the tides down too so we'll get a really good idea of, uh, of where it can go so uh, and then I'm gonna load the boat up take a little bath at the fish cleaning station with their hose <laughs> I'm such a scumbag but I love it you know I, I, I probably should make a proper video about this but I want to I want to talk and see if I can relate to you guys about about uh, expectations. Uh, well, and what I mean by that is, like, for me, you know, when I'm on these trips, often I'm always just like, I gotta just cram in as much as I possibly can. I've just gotta be on this schedule. I gotta be up before dark, and I, I have to get up before dawn, and I have to do the, and I have to cram. It's like I just end up driving myself crazy. I do that with almost everything in my life, and. Uh, there's a lot more to it. I probably can articulate it better at some other time, but you know, on this on this trip, I've just been taking my time. I don't even get out and doing anything until late morning, sometimes noon. I just make my own coffee. I just stretch in the grass here, take Wavy for a walk, go gather supplies. You know, and I love it. It's it's a sane pace, and it's it all it almost means everything as to whether a person's going to enjoy themselves or not. That's just my opinion, but I, I kind of want to talk about it with with the folks who are interested in that kind of stuff. Maybe I'll kick it over to the other channels so I'm not, you know, take burning up precious time on the main channel here. But, okay, guys, enough rambling. Let's uh, let's go kayak out to the, the boat and go explore some rivers. Stay tuned. Oh, my kayak's still there. Okay guys, let's go peek up river a little bit. Well guys, I was, be I was able to slip through the channel right there of the Carabelle Boat Club and I think there's some little fingers that cut up into these, I don't know what you call that, like grasslands or Everglades or something. Let's go sneak into one of those. Cross this bridge on my scooter a couple times. I love this. The meaning of nimble, the literal meaning. There we go. I love crossing under bridges. I'm always filming it for you guys. <laughs> I guess we're entering a bayou. I don't know what that means exactly, but. Come to a fork in the road, and it makes all the difference. Which way do we go, guys? It's like a little maze back here. <laughs> I'm just putting around it two or three miles an hour. It's come up to two feet a couple times, and I didn't hit bottom, so I figure it's all mud anyway, so. Looks like we found the back way into the Carabelle River. This would be the mouth coming up. And it all stays around three feet. Alright guys, we made it back to Carabelle here. I think we're going to go to the launch ramp and put her back on the trailer and think about heading out of town soon. Okay guys, well I hope you enjoyed that. Got to see what this boat can do. Well, I gotta stay 
steer here. This boat does make you steer a lot, especially when you're going into the wind and going slow, but all boats will do that to a certain extent. What I'm finding out is there is all sorts of just back channels that are about three feet, two and a half, three feet, which the barge could do easy and drafts less than this boat. This is a, I'm taking a little video here. Okay. What would you say the um, the weight is on that one? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I guess he's about, he about eight pounds or more. Backroads here. So we are changing pace a little bit in this episode. Um, I am working on the the Vagabond here probably for the next week or so. Um, I got some, now that I've decided I'm going to keep it, then I'm going to do some work to it. Um, it's usable as is, obviously, but it, it does need a few things that um, before I can feel really comfortable, you know, taking on a longer trip. So I have a friend here in Florida, northern Florida, a couple friends, a couple, um, met them through the channel here, and they have, uh, they're have they letting me use their little house, uh, which they, they have for guests mostly, and it has a great, just a perfect driveway to back the boat in with a canopy of old uh, live oaks, I think is what they call them, for shade, and I just, I feel, I feel luckier, I feel better than I deserve, <laughs> luckier than I deserve. More blessed than I deserve. I don't know. I'll, I'll work on that, but that's the general gist of it. So how about if I turn the phone around uh, really quick, and I'll just explain to you initially kind of what I'm working on today. Okay, so rather than the, the beagle in the way, you guys have probably seen this stuff before. Um, people make uh, cutting boards out of it. It's extremely expensive for what it is, but it's also very tough. Um, and I decided to go with that for... Here, I'll, we'll crawl up on the boat. So here, I'll show you guys really quick kind of what I'm talking about. So nice private driveway in the back of the side of the house here with some shade, which does come in really handy when you're living in Florida, even in the winter. And uh, let me crawl up the ladder here, and I'll show you what I'm working on first. Okay, so this, this boat, unfortunately... <laughs> Came with a missing, I don't know what you call these. Maybe Roy will chime in in the comments. If so, I'll pin his comment. Or anybody really um, knows more about boats than me, which is almost everybody. It's this hatch. You see them a lot on sailboats, right? Because they give you a little more headroom when you're ducking into the cabin. Now, I'm 5'10", and I don't really, I mean, it's nice to have but I'm not a very good carpenter and there's a little bit of skill involved in building rebuilding this it kind of mm, pissed me off when I showed up to buy this boat and the guy didn't mention that it was missing because like when it rains I've had to you know make do something to cover it up and it's just you know it's an obvious kind of you know missing piece and he just the guy that sold to me was like ah oh, they're easy to build you know like flippantly but anyways um I'm going to use that that material that I just showed you, the cutting board material is what I call it, to build this latch. I didn't want to do it in wood because eventually it's going to rot and I just have to build it again. So um, let's see. Let's see how it turns out. I'm, I'm just kind of winging it here, but, I, you know, I, I got a plan. Okay, guys. So one of the things I'm doing to this boat this week is trying to make some sense of the wiring behind the helm. Like many old boats, it's an absolute rat's nest, um, which just makes me really nervous. I mean, when you're like out in, you know, the middle of nowhere and you've got a rat's nest precariously <laughs> uh, behind, you know, I, 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 my theory is that is it's a couple of things because 
as boats go on, people update electronics and, you know, fix things here and there, add and subtract things. And they don't necessarily pull the old wiring out because it's such a pain to do so. Most boats, you know, especially a cabin boat, it's, it's wound back behind the walls and stuff. And so, you know, they just snip it and leave it. And then you don't know what's working and what isn't. Um, and then also, because wiring is usually hidden from sight, it's kind of an out of sight, out of mind thing. And and uh, I've my 12 years or so of boating, I'd say the only times I've ever gotten in any sort of trouble, which hasn't really, you know, knock on wood, if I can find some wood on this boat, knock, knock. Um, anytime I've ever kind of, you know, had an engine not start or things not working, it's always been electronics and wiring. One of the reasons is because it's just very simple. Um, <clears throat> electricity and water don't mix. <laughs> um, that's probably the easiest way to put it. Um, and also, I'm just not, I'm, I'm terrible at wiring. So, so what I'm doing is I'm cleaning up this wiring. I'm being really careful at, here, I'm going to turn the phone around and talk to you. Okay, guys, you can see um, this is what's going on behind the helm of the Vagabond. It's actually not as messy as it looks. I, I kind of, as I've looked at it closer, I understand what's going on. But one thing that was making it very tight and complicated is there's two batteries on board, which is good, with a Perco switch. And this is the number one battery. That's the number two battery. And this battery, number one, was tucked, you know, crammed in the helm here. And it was, you know, just making everything super tight. So what I did is I went and got some battery extension, um, battery cable extensions, and I'm moving both batteries up to the underneath the uh, the cutty. So that'll give me room to come and make some more sense of this wiring and kind of understand what's working and what isn't. Now most everything is working, and I'm being really careful to document what I'm doing. And um, I mean it's it's going to work, but I'm just it's basically just an improvement. You can see, I mean, there's just big messes down there, and it's just, you know, I just, I'm going to feel a whole lot better when I understand what's going on behind this helm. Um, <clears throat> so, that's what I'm doing today. Okay, guys, so this is what I came up with. I moved both the batteries up here underneath the starboard side cutty to get them out of there. <clears throat> um, had to go up to the tractor supply and get some wire, but clean that all up I mean that's you know that's pretty clean at least I know where everything's going at least the at least the colors are right this thing had all black wires even to the positives <laughs> which could be a total you know I mean I'm glad that I you know went through the trouble of checking where everything went so now I got all the colors right and uh, now let's start working on this a little bit most of you probably know this but <clears throat> today I'm uh, well, I'm working on the boat, of course, and I'm changing the oil in the, the Honda 50. And if I can, I try to get OEM filters and things like that, but they can often, often be pretty hard to find. And if you can find them, they're usually double the price of a cross-referenced oil filter, which I ended up just going to Napa. And they just got on their computer and I gave them a few numbers off the old one. And I went online and found the official Honda filter. And then they just cross-referenced it with a with a Napa filter, and it cost me, you know, I'd say 40% of what it would cost to get it on Honda. If you have the time and you have the force force site, um, you can go online and, and get them usually from a from a website, and they'll send them to your house. But I didn't plan ahead for this, so. But uh, I just wanted to mention that, um, you know, you can you can, almost any auto parts store if they want to take the time and. If you have a few numbers to kind of get get them to go on, they can usually find you a filter pretty easy. <clears throat> I'm a big oil changing guy, and so I don't really go fancy with name brand oils. <clears throat> um, I, you know, but uh, I don't, my engine's cocked to the side, but you can see I just went with a with a Napa filter, and it was like I don't know eight bucks or something as opposed to you know twenty plus for a Honda filter. Same thing. If you change the oil often, like you're supposed to, you don't have to worry about it. Hey guys, I just want to give you a quick 
show here. So I'm uh, I, I took out I don't know what you'd call this an engine cover. It's mostly it's mostly there for just dead and sound, which you know has its place, and I'm gonna keep it. It's this one's in you know pretty bad shape, and normally they they have a another second one that goes up like that, <clears throat> which this one didn't come with. But uh, yeah, I just I wanted to pull it off. So, and in the, what I discovered when I did, you know, was there was a couple places to patch, and so I've got this um, this cutting board material. I don't know what they officially call it, but that's what I'm using to make some, you know, some some patches and hatches on this boat this week. But while before I I plug this one, I just want to see if I can get a, 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 a sh you know show you show you guys how well these boats are built. So they actually they're kind of like double hulled. So this is you know they don't have any wood in them. They're they're really thick. Um, you know they're really thick fiberglass. I hear they're, I've read that they were hand laid, they still are, but if you go back into this cavity here, it then, you know, it goes into like a second layer, so, so these boats have, you know, kind of, they're kind of molded in two sections, they, you have the hull, then you have a, a dead space, and then you have what you call, what I would call the inner hull, which is all of this molding, um, there's another spot inside that I can probably try to show you guys what I'm talking about here. All right, well, this is about the best I can do. It's more function than pretty, but uh, certainly gets the job done, and I'm seeing a lot worse. Let me show you from the deck. So, yeah. 5200. Got to work with it quick. I got to make another one right here. That's where the cable pass through used to be and for some reason they raised it higher so I'm gonna plug that hole also before the rest of this tube completely dries um, I'm also wondering guys anyone watching this these you know these cables they come in and they have to do a you know at a loop can I just turn these fittings around so the cables come in the right direction and get rid of this loop what do you guys think I'll give you a close-up here for a second this is a Sea Star hydraulic steering, as you probably know. Well, I'm over here across the Highway One at the Tractor Supply. They're not quite as abundant as Dollar Generals, but give it time, there will be. And I'm looking for some pallets. They always have piles of wood and stuff in the back, you know, that they're giving away. So let me show you what I found. So I know I'm gonna need some of some of this size wood, or maybe these for the counters that I'm redoing. But check this out. I've never seen metal out here for free. I might bring my salsa over here and Cut up some of these frames or whatever they are. I mean, this is a lot of good metal that I can take home and weld something up. I'm always looking for looking for metal like this. And I brought my generator and my sawzall. I'm gonna take some chunks off of that, man. You could never have enough metal laying around for making stuff. So. All right, almost. Got one apart. It's kind of soft metal, but that's okay. It'll make a good lumber rack or roof rack or something. Well, thanks for the help, Beagle. Mm -hmm.